Welcome to the W3Schools CSS Background Tutorial. CSS background properties are used to set the background of pages and elements. Here's how you set the background color of an element. In this example, we have set the background color of the page. You can do this by setting the background color property for the body element. In CSS, color is usually specified by either a hex value like this or an RGB value like this. or a color name, like this. Let's set the background color for this h1 element and this p element as well. Set the h1 element background color to orange. and the background color for the P element or paragraph to red. You can set the background color for almost any element. Or you can specify an image to use as a background, like this. The background image is specified with the background image property and the URL of the image you want to use. By default, the image is repeated so it covers the entire element. Let's look at the image we used in this example. So we see the image we used is pretty small, but in our example it's repeated both horizontally and vertically. But be careful when setting an image as a background. Some images can make the text almost unreadable. You see with this background, the text is pretty hard to read. Let's try with a different image. This is a gradient image. It starts with a purple up here and it goes gradually to a white color. This image looks pretty strange when it's repeated both horizontally and vertically. It would look a lot better if it's repeated only horizontally. You can do this by setting the background repeat property. Now this looks a lot better. We set the background repeat property to repeat X. Repeat X is for horizontal repeat, and repeat Y is for vertical repeat. You can also specify that the background image should not be repeated at all, and only be shown once, like in this example. Showing the image only once is specified by setting the background repeat property to no repeat. But in this example, the background image is shown in the same place as the text. We want to change the position of the image so it doesn't disturb the text too much. This is set with the background position property. That's better, but the image is still disturbing the text. Let's also add a margin to the right side so that the text will never touch the image. Now the text will never disturb the image. There are many properties to consider when dealing with backgrounds. To shorten the code, it's also possible to specify all the properties in a single property. This is called a shorthand property. The shorthand for background properties is simply background. Using the background shorthand, we set the following properties. Background color, background image, background repeat, and background position. 
When using the shorthand property, the order of the property values are background color, background image, background repeat, background attachment, and background position. It doesn't matter if one of the property values are missing, as long as the ones that are present are in this order. We've gone through all these properties except background attachment. This can be used to set a fixed background image. This background image will not scroll with the rest of the page. Its position is fixed. That's because of the background attachment property is set to fixed. You can set the background attachment property to scroll and the image will scroll with the rest of the page again, like this. On the W3Schools tutorial page, we list all the CSS background properties. And there's a link for each property that goes to our CSS reference, where you can find more information for any CSS property. This concludes our tutorial for the CSS background. Thank you for watching.